Hey, Ray Delvecchio here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com. Let's go through all the steps that you need to do to make sure that you build and launch a client website the right way. The first thing is you gotta make sure that if there is an existing website out there and you're doing a redesign as opposed to a fresh launch, you gotta make sure that all of that SEO power and authority that has already been built up for that site is transferred over to the new website. So the best steps that you can take to do that are to get all of the URLs that are already indexed in Google Put them into a spreadsheet and there's a great tool called Screaming Frog SEO Spider. Do a Google search for that and you'll find it. And that will get you a spreadsheet with all the URLs along with other information like the meta tags, the headlines. That way you can make sure the on-page SEO is even better than what is already out there. And chances are if they're doing a redesign, the previous web designer didn't really take care of those steps. In addition to getting that spreadsheet with the URLs, I like to download every image that's on that website. And then I also like to take screenshots of all the main pages of the website or every page if it's not that big of a website. And the reason I do that is because one of my clients, once they told their previous web designer that they were moving on, they took down their site within a day or two before they had a chance to do that. And luckily I did it the day that I knew that they were choosing me. So I had the backups of everything. Otherwise we may have lost something like 500 pictures because they had a ton of job photos. And if we lost that, it would have been a complete disaster. The next thing is, is the email addresses. If there's any email addresses already set up under that domain name, you gotta make sure that you set that up within the new web hosting. Speaking of, that's the next step. You gotta get the domain name and web hosting. Obviously, if you're, if you're doing a redesign, you're gonna use an existing domain name. But if you do it fresh, you get to either register it yourself, have them do it. The same goes for the hosting. I went deep onto that subject of who owns the domain and who owns the hosting in another video. I'll link that up in the top right here. Once you get that settled, after you launch the website, you just wanna make sure that all of the old URLs are forwarding to the correct page on the new website. Now, you wanna start building the website either in a staging area, which a lot of web hosting companies offer nowadays, or what I like to do is do it on a separate domain. I have a domain that is specifically designed just to create these websites. It's not indexed in Google, that way there's no duplicate content issues or anything like that. If I'm building a new WordPress website for one client, I'll put that under their subfolder demo domain.com slash client a and then once i launch the website i delete that from my demo domain to keep that clean the biggest choice that you'll make with wordpress is the theme you're going to choose to build and the plugins that you're going to install i find when it comes to the plugins that's going to depend very much on the industry you're building for because the functionality for a roofing website is a lot different than a restaurant website when it comes to the theme if you are planning on building multiple websites i highly recommend that you get an advanced theme builder or framework and my personal favorite is divi it's the most popular theme on WordPress. It's a drag and drop builder that makes it super easy to customize your website, especially if you don't have any code knowledge. They have pre-made layouts and it's way easier to get a high level design without those design skills. If you'd like to see me build a complete website with Divi, I'll link that up here in the top right. The next step that I like to do is create the skeleton of the website. So I, at this point, you're gonna know what pages you have to build, but you might not have content for those pages. So I just like to build out all the service pages, the about page, the contact page, you know, you can just go as simple as publishing the title only on the WordPress page. You don't need to add in any content. You can add some dummy content if you want, just to see how it looks. Something like lorem ipsum text, some headlines, an image, that kind of thing. And start the design around that before you get the real content, either from the client or you do it yourself. And with those pages in place, you can create your WordPress menu. And then before I do any serious design, I like to find maybe two or three industry examples or previous projects that I've done with my own clients, shoot over those links and see what they have to say, see what they like, see what they don't like. And if they say that they really like one, you can almost use that exact same template and customize it a little bit. Or if you don't have that much in your portfolio, just go ahead and find some really nice local websites, especially their competitors. I find that many local clients are looking to clone their competitor websites. You know, they know the businesses out there that are ranking on Google. They wanna do the same, they're kinda of jealous of that. So if you can build them something similar, they're always happy with that. From the color standpoint, you can either create your own color palette or if they have an existing logo or colors that they use, just go ahead and use those. I like to make sure that everything's consistent across their offline branding and their online branding. You know, if they got a logo on a truck or a t-shirt, you wanna make sure you have that exact same logo, the same fonts, the same colors. So it's consistent when people see them across those different mediums. For the websites that I build, the most important thing is having a clear call to action on the homepage. You know, that's either a big contrasting button, the phone number, a link to a contact form, 
anything like that, but you wanna make sure that the user knows exactly what they have to do after they find the information that they need on the homepage. The majority of people are not gonna go browsing around five or 10 pages on a website. That's the rare case for the people that are in heavy research mode, but most people just land on a page. They wanna you know, get a quick rundown of what that business is, what they do, and within five to 10 seconds, they're gonna make a decision whether they're gonna look further, contact you, or just move on to the next competitor. Once we get the design in place, I just like dragging around the browser window, making sure that the mobile responsiveness is working and that it looks good in every single size from mobile phone to tablet to regular size desktop, laptop, to an oversized monitor. This is where it helps a little bit if you know CSS because you can make a few customizations based on the size of the screen with CSS styles. And that's one thing that I learned early on in my days of web design. And I still like to do to this day, you know, there's always certain sections that some people might have a hard time customizing it, but it's really easy for me to go in there and add, you know, three to five lines of CSS to fix up any issues with mobile responsiveness. The next thing for getting more Google search, you wanna make sure that that local business or whatever type of business it is, has the right schema. So if you've never heard of schema, I think it's schema.org. You might want to double check that. Just search Google for local business schema and you can either mark up your HTML. That's kind of the harder way to do it, but you can also add a snippet of code called JSON, which is just the information for that business. If you have that on every page, Google's going to know the address, the phone number, you know, other social media profiles that are linked to that business. Another great example of schema is on food recipe blogs. You know, a blog is gonna publish a recipe and Google doesn't know it's a recipe unless it has that schema in there. And that's how it's gonna show those rich text snippets within Google when people are searching for recipes. And the same goes for a local business. I think this is built into Yoast SEO. It may actually be a paid plugin or advanced feature of it, but if you just do a Google search for schema generator, you'll find something there. And I usually just use that piece of code and copy and paste the different business information for each one of my clients using that same code that was created with the generator. And you normally just wanna insert that into the head of your document on every page. At this point, you should have a great website built. You just wanna get the final approval from your client and you should be ready to launch. If there's anything else you need to clean up, you can always do that on the live website. You know, it, it only takes a day or two usually to make those changes. So I wouldn't worry too much about being 100% perfect if something's not completely right. That's the beauty of building websites. You know, it takes a second to make a change on the live website. Once the site is launched, that's when I start thinking about security. You're gonna get, you know, hackers and that kind of thing that might try and log into the website, insert malicious code if you don't update your plugins or your themes. So I have a complete video on WordPress security that I just released. I'll link that up here in the top right if you want more details on that. I also start doing the speed optimizations at this point as well. From the images standpoint, I always optimize images before I upload them. I don't want an image that's 5,000 pixels wide by 3,500 tall, which is like five megabytes when I can scale that down because on almost every monitor, you're not gonna go bigger than maybe six or 700 pixels. So that's generally what I like to scale images down to before I upload them to WordPress. But then you can also install a cache plugin. A web hosting company like SiteGround, they have their own optimizing plugin just called the SG Optimizer. So look into the ways that you can optimize your website and I will link up a video here where I go into my steps for speed optimization that you can do with shared hosting and that'll get you even faster than a lot of people on more advanced hosting plans. I find that you don't need to upgrade for most local websites because they're not getting tons of traffic. It's not the same as something like a food blog which might get traffic from around the world, hundreds or thousands of visitors a day. A local website is generally under you know 30 to 50 visitors a day and if they can convert those to leads and they're selling something that's higher priced, that's all they need to do well. And then finally, in order to monitor your website's performance, you wanna install Google Search Console. That's gonna show you how your website is showing up and how many impressions you're getting on Google Search. And then Google Analytics so that you can track how the visitors interact with your website once they're on there. And then on Google Analytics, you gotta make sure that you have goal completion set up so again, you have that call to action for whatever the goal is that you want, you know, submit a contact form, click a phone number, that kind of thing. And once you have that set up, you'll be able to see the percentage of visitors that land on your website that are actually converting to leads. So those are the basic steps. Obviously for any individual client, 
You may alter these a bit. You may need to go into a bit more detail. But if you do this for every client website that you build, you're gonna be better than 80% of the competition. And the money is in the management. Launching a website by itself is not that valuable if the business owner is not gonna be able to go in there, edit it themselves, or read the analytics reports, the search console reports, and stay on top of that. If you do that for them, and you make sure that it's converting, they're gonna love that they have somebody taking care of that for them, and they're gonna stick with you for many years, especially if you're bringing the results. That's all I got for this video, and if you're a WordPress freelancer, you wanna find more local clients, go to my website and download a free cheat sheet. I'll link that up here in the top right. It's 15 tools to start your web design business. We talked about a couple of them today, and there's a few more in there that will help you out, both with the website building side and also the management side, other services that you might use, accounting, that kind of thing. Download that PDF, and as long as you got the skills to create a website, you can get started looking for your first client today. Last but not least, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. If you've worked with a client before and you have other steps or things that you like to do to your client websites, leave it in the comments below. I love hearing new plugins and themes because I'm kind of set in my ways. I go through almost the same process for every one of my client websites. That is the advantage of building websites for one particular niche. You get really good with your process and it makes you way faster and ultimately that's how you make more money. Thanks a lot for taking the time to watch this entire video and I'll link up a couple videos here if you want to keep learning.